Hi, everybody. March 4th, coming to you live from New York. Um, obviously, um, tough week, especially in the Ukraine. Uh, markets are up and down. We're mostly down. And uh, obviously, our uh, thoughts and prayers are with the Ukrainian people. For those of you who don't know, I was born in the Ukraine in a little uh, town called uh, Chernovtsi. Maybe we can put a map, show people uh, where it was, where it is, right close to the Moldova border uh, on the western part of Ukraine. And uh, born in 1965 and I uh, immigrated, my, my parents immigrated with me and my sister out of the Ukraine in uh, 1972. We took the train to Vienna and from there uh, immigrated to Israel. So I spent 16 years in Israel and then came to the United States. And uh, obviously, again, uh, my heart goes out to the Ukrainian people and the fight uh, for freedom that they're putting uh, together. Uh, so these are very uh, challenging and uh, uh, testing time. And if you've seen, if you follow me on Twitter, you saw uh, me do several posts uh, helping uh, uh, raise money for the Ukrainian government, helping put money in the pockets of uh, Ukrainian people uh, who are customers of Celsius. And uh, also we published a special address or three different addresses, actually, if you want to send Bitcoin or Ethereum or stablecoin. Uh, also today we're enabling uh, uh, cell pay. So if you uh, use cell pay, you can basically send uh coins to you at celsius.network you just use your cell pay and you put that as the address and all of that is going to go to humanitarian uh efforts so um uh, and if you have other ideas of what we can do for the ukrainian people uh let us know we also managed to get a few people out uh, uh, some of our employees contractors and other people that we care for, uh, get them out of the country and uh, into Poland and other places. Um, so um, very, very difficult situation there. I can tell you uh, there are a lot of volunteers who are, uh, while people are leaving, are coming into Poland to help the uh, re uh, resistance and try to slow down or reverse uh, the Russian army. And uh, obviously those are all uh, heroic efforts that uh, we need to support and uh, uh, encourage, but uh, it's definitely a very difficult situation. All right, today uh, we have a special show. Uh, Zach is joining us as well from uh, from Reno. Hey, hey, everybody! And uh, for those of you who, uh, hey, and so for those of you who uh, um, always dreamt about going to Harvard or MIT or Stanford and you, you just could never get in just like me. I would never be able to get into any of these schools. I was not a very good student when I was in high school. Uh, I'm going to uh, teach the same class that I uh, got to teach uh, two weeks ago at MIT. So you get a special treat of uh, uh, me giving you uh, uh, probably something like 40 minutes of Slide by slide, exactly the same thing that the MBA students uh, at, in the crypto MIT class uh, got to see. And uh, you don't even have to pay the tuition, which is probably, I don't know, sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 a year or something like that, or more. So here we go. Anyway, let's get started. We have a lot to cover. And uh, then we'll uh, uh, dig into the stuff. So... Um, um, all right, let's start maybe the, with the weekly numbers. We'll get through that. Sure, but yeah. So um, we had a great week this week, 14,000 registrations, 3,900 first-time customers, inflows of 369 million, outflows of 300 million, still leaving us with a net transfer of $68 million worth of crypto. That's 441 Bitcoin, uh, minus 2,200 ETH. Uh, 30 million in stable coins and 136,000 Solana. Uh, Solana has been a really big community um, that's come in. I think there's a lot of Celsians that are also Solana holders, um, and, and they're very happy to get that sweet, sweet yield with us. Yeah, and uh, again, uh, reiterating the flywheel, uh, more users. You've seen uh, every week a lot more users, uh, more assets. You're seeing us most weeks. We're positive. 
uh, more uh, yield. We earn more money. We, uh, with that, we basically also obviously um, distribute more rewards to our community and uh, obviously more and more earn and sell. So maybe let's go through those slides showing uh, the sell growth uh, every week we pay. Go ahead. Yeah, um, so this is a, a great graph showing that increased burn. But again, the, the burn is derived from the amount of people choosing to earn and sell. Um, and then also sell holders. So as we've seen this constant go up, um, we've had the cumulative burn here, almost one and a half million tokens uh, burned. And, and every week we're seeing that trend go higher and higher. So um, additionally, this week, um, are the corporate team and, and high net worth team are reaching out um, to all these accredited USC and letting them know um, what the benefits are of earning and sell. We're seeing great adoption. I'm hoping to get some stats for everybody next week. But, um, you know, this is a, a huge way to support the community to earn and sell. Um, you do get those 30% premium rewards as a platinum user, get much higher swap limits, um, all kinds of benefits, discounts on loans, um, and some very, very cool stuff. So check it out. Try earning and sell. Uh, next week, we're implementing some adjustments to the tiers for silver and gold tiers as well. Um, again, to make it even more beneficial to earn and sell. Yeah, and that's what completes the flywheel, right? A flywheel is something that keeps turning. So more people earning and sell, that means we burn more. And when we burn more and more people earn and sell, uh, they tell more friends, uh, right? They, they brag about it. They show everybody how great Celsius is. And that results in more users, more users, more assets, and so on, so on, right? So the flywheel keeps uh, flying and accelerating. And uh, obviously, again, thanks uh, to all of you for... Uh, about half of all of our new users come for referrals. Again, you get $50. The person who joins gets $50. Uh, we rather pay all that stuff to you. So use your referral code in your app, in your web app. All that is, is available. Uh, introduce people, uh, educate them, get them to use all the different utilities. There's a lot of them, right? We would probably need to do a whole show just about the utilities of the platform and the sell token. So there's all things that uh, uh, you need to share with others, right? So, um, all right, so uh, uh, what else do we have? So we have uh, a bunch of events coming up. Again, in each, each time we go to uh, an event, uh, there is a lot of, uh, um, um, we throw together a crypto, a Celsius uh, get together. So South by Southwest, I think that's the slide that was just on. Uh, that's on uh, March 12th in Austin. That's during um, uh, during the same event. We will be also doing a meetup on March 12th. So if you happen to be in Austin, you plan to be in Austin, make sure you're there on March 12th. The night of March 12th, we'll announce the actual location. And please come sign up, join us, meet the community. Uh, many of us are going to be there in person. I'll be there in person. Uh, also Belgrade uh, this weekend. We have a hackathon this weekend, also a meetup. Uh, so if you are happen to be in Belgrade, this is an NFT hackathon. So I know it's oversubscribed. We'll squeeze you in if you're planning to be in Belgrade. And then, um, we have one more, right? So we have uh, Bitcoin 2022, April 6th through the 9th. We'll have a meetup there as well. One of the biggest, uh, this year we're expecting something like 45,000 or 50,000 people to attend. So this is going to be, uh, uh a blowout event right miami the mecca right the this mecca, is the mecca yeah. of crypto it's the biggest event of the year in crypto mm -hmm. and celsius has the biggest uh booth in the yeah. event uh we're also going to be doing some raffles giving out swag doing uh, uh i'll be on stage uh, several times and obviously again uh, a, a giant meetup of all the celsians all the celsians bitcoin lovers so all that is amazing and I can't wait to be there, right? Last year was a blowout and uh, this year is going to be even bigger. So looking forward to our, our booth for those, those, I think it was, we were there two days, two and a half days was just absolutely hammered for those two and a half days when, but we got to meet so many other Celsians. And then the cool part was seeing people that you've, you've known on Twitter for one, two, three years, and then everyone's meeting up and, and then they're meeting all the other people they interact with. And uh, really, really great to see these people come together. Um, all the hodlers, all the sell token holders, the, the users that we've been able to impact their life. 
um, it's really, really a fun trip. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, and, uh, and also we were in the news, uh, almost every day, uh, last week. So, uh, again, if you saw the kit article, uh, or video interview, sorry. <laughs> um, Kitco. Here we go. And if you've missed the video again, do a search. We'll also post a link on the bottom. Uh, so you can look it up. Also, I did an interview on Yield Labs. So if you missed that, uh, here is Yield Labs. And uh, uh, Tushar was on uh, uh, which event? Sorry, I didn't write it down. Yeah, CES. So he was on in CES and another event, right? There was a second event that he was uh, being interviewed on. Yeah, and I think we have a video of Tushar uh, speaking at these. Yeah, let's play that. Look, so it's uh, it's really a, truly an exciting time, uh, you know, where we are, and we are all uh, sort of experiencing this uh, as we go through it. Uh, imagine what web was like; web 2.0 was in you know, 20 years ago, right? And we we went from sort of people having to start their companies from uh, you know a, a few servers in their in, in in their dorm room to like going on to AWS and being able to completely take the friction out of starting a company. Web 3.0 takes that and pushes it to an even you know faster level. Yeah, and. Um... So um, also um, we have a slide with new rates. So we move, adjusted some of the rates uh, today. So you can see uh, uh, some of them went out, some of them went down. Uh, Bitcoin, you can see we changed the rate. Uh, we increased the rate for the first Bitcoin. So, so it used to be only a quarter of a Bitcoin. Now it's a full Bitcoin, but the rate is a little lower. And uh, if you have more than one Bitcoin, then the rate went down. Again, we're going to be making additional adjustments. So we'll be adding a third tier in the middle that will allow you to earn uh, something in between, between that uh, a one and a half and 5%. So that's coming as well. Uh, and uh, uh, many other uh, add-ons also. AVAX, right? We launched a new uh, AVAX uh, promo. Mm -hmm. So if you haven't seen that, again, it's also listed on our website. So if you have AVAX here, there are three new reasons to push your AVAX to Celsius and earn more yield. Alex, could you talk a little bit about like why we make rate changes, how that goes into our business model and, and why rates go up sometimes, why they go down sometimes and, and how that is working in the best interest of the community? Sure, yeah. So so rates are um, are liquid. They're... they're uh, Really, again, it's not, they don't go up and down with prices. A lot of people think, well, you know, you, you lower rates when prices go down eh, or you raise rates when prices go up. It actually has to do with uh, volatility. And right now, yes, there's a lot of volatility, but it's a risk off volatility. What happens in the risk off, meaning people are nervous, is that they take less loans. They take less Bitcoin loans or dollar loans. I'm talking about institutions and so on. And when there's less demand, uh, rates go down. Uh, so we have to adjust that as well to make sure that we match the loan book uh, to our uh, increasing number of coins, right? There's more and more Celsius join. You can see that every week. They're pushing more and more coins on us. And all those coins have to uh, earn, right? So remember, if you have 2% uh, of the pool, and suddenly the pool size doubles, now you have 1% of the pool, right? So, and if the earnings are the same, you're gonna be earning half as much, meaning we have to lower the rates by half. So obviously we don't have lowering by half, but increasing coins, less demand equals lower rates to, for everybody, for me, for you, and so on. We don't make any exception. We're all in the same pool, earning pro rata. Uh, that's how Celsius was created from the beginning. Some of the assets are staking assets, so they have different economics. They're driven by uh, staking. So, for example, uh, Polygon, the rates were high because there was less competition. Now that there's more competition for the rate, uh, the rate has dropped. Uh, so that has to do with how many people are staking, how many platforms are offering staking rewards. Again, we don't decide that. We just try to get you as much as possible uh, out of those staking uh, uh, rewards. And then for our business, like uh, 
you know, nobody likes to see rates go down, but it's really important for us to maintain the sustainable business model long term. Right. So we're not over promising or under promising. We're delivering what can be delivered and then making sure we can do this for the next hundred years. Right. So Celsius can be a place where people can count on earning that yield. Yeah. And, and people have to understand that you, you really need to ask where this yield is coming from. Are, peop are uh, people that offer you yield uh, pull it out of their um, uh, treasury or are they getting it by having third parties actually pay uh, yield because if you're paying out of the treasury, that is not a sustainable model, right? That to Josh, uh, to Zach's point, just sitting in front of me. So that's why I'm, I keep getting it. Uh, make my brain gets it mixed up all the time. But uh, the the point is, is that Celsius is. It's very important for us to uh, get it from uh, institutions and exchanges and, and ARB and all kinds of other sources, right? DeFi and so on. And you can verify it yourself. Again, we publish on our website all the addresses for Treasury. Uh, you can just take that address, go post it in Etherscan and look at the last transaction, right? You can see, okay, when, when did Celsius do transactions in their Treasury, right? So we are not relying on our Treasury to pay you rewards. We are really uh, buying it in the market, we are, uh, I'm talking about sell token. We have to go and buy in the market most of the time. And uh, when we pay you Bitcoin or Ethereum, uh, we get it from third parties. So if, if you're staking or using somebody else who's uh, cannot show you any of these things, uh, chan pretty high, there's a pretty high chance that they are uh, uh, basically subsidizing what they're paying you. And that's obviously never a good thing. All right. So, um, uh, we had a great uh, Celsius X launch last week. And uh, well, let's share some of the slides. So again, if you think about the, the Celsius X expansion uh, strategy, very similar to the Celsius model, more tokens equals more blockchains equals more applications. And that translates into, you know, us adding ADA and Doge and ETH. Right now it's Polygon, but we will be adding other blockchains. And that obviously translates into us supporting uh, QuickSwap and uh, 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 what's the name? Chidao, right? Yeah, Chidao. And, and um, I even saw Josh this morning tweeting about other partnerships on DeFi. So like the limits here are, are, are it's unlimited. Uh, the amount of possibilities that we can partner and deploy these assets and do all kinds of new um, strategies to, again, act on the behalf of the community and create these brand new liquidity pools and, and sources of yield. Yeah. And, and uh, again, we are looking to expand uh, with or partner with other blockchains, with other projects, with other DAOs, with, with liquidity providers, AMMs, you name it. You have a, you have a, you want to be part of the Celsius X family, reach out to us and X at Celsius.network and uh, tell us what you want to do and we will help you out right so uh, an example of this right now is um on the i think it's the cellmatic pair um there is a huge apy for providing liquidity there so go check that out um on on um quick swap um, we also talked about on twitter it's there's really some cool stuff that you can do Yep. Uh, so a few more uh, media exposures. Crypto Slate, uh, again, a great article. If you haven't read it, we'll post a link for that as well. And uh, this is the quote that they put up there, uh, uh, calling me a dubious Bitcoiner. You know, like, uh, you know, uh, that's correct. That's true. I was a denier at the beginning, but uh, look at me now, right? And Grid Daily, also a great article. So if you if you missed that, uh, yield is a killer app for Bitcoin, for blockchain. Uh, we'll post links to these articles. You can also do Google search. It works very well. Also, we were in the uh, top 50. Uh, CB Insight did a survey of the top uh, blockchains, top applications. Celsius was selected uh, in, to, on the list as well as being ranked number one for yield and for a uh, um, for the award. So we are uh, thankful for all these people for what they're doing. And I really like the video that the team created, the uh, Celsius, uh, the home for crypto. So maybe let's run that again, and then we'll uh, come back and talk about a few other things.
Yeah, very dramatic. So um, we, uh, you know, we, we started with yield, then we added loans, then we added swap and other functions. Uh, uh, swaps just crossed uh, $250 million in transaction volume. And uh, last week, uh, this week, I mean, we added uh, 60,000 new uh, swap users activated this week. Next week, we'll be adding another 40,000. And that covers, I think, seven or eight new countries as well. So if you are uh, uh, you got frustrated or you gave up on being activated, there's a pretty good chance that uh, you're on that list either this week or next week. Uh, so check your app. Make sure that uh, if you have access, uh, that's amazing, and start using it. Uh, again, all these things together uh, are the makes us a home for crypto and allow you to really take advantage of all of these great services that Celsius provides. Uh, I saw Aaron Bennett uh, ran a comparison between Celsius and Crypto.com and Qcoin and, and, and just basically uh, uh, clearly showing that Celsius is, is the best platform for swaps. Uh, in the beginning, he was like, yeah, much better than Crypto.com, but not better than Qcoin. And then he, when he went to the logs, he realized that they charged him fees that he forgot to calculate. And he's like, oops, sorry. Now with fees, Celsius is clear number one, right? So... So you have to understand that a lot of these fees are hidden fees. Sometimes they take uh, tokens from you that you like, they'll show you a great swap. For example, you're moving from Bitcoin to Ethereum. It's a great swap. You're getting the same like Celsius, but then they charge you somewhere else, right? They basically say, oh, you must have tokens on, uh, you must buy tokens from us, or you must uh, already have tokens and we'll basically take our fees on those tokens. So all those things make those transactions much more expensive. No limits, no minimums, no maximums, uh, no need to own one cell token at Celsius to get the best um, swap rates. There are caps, meaning how much you can trade every day or how much you can swap every day. And to get the highest cap, you do want to be platinum. Uh, so again, all that is listed and, is, and described, but there's no economic, we're not trying to put our, sink our uh, claws into you and, and lock you up or, or, or uh, somehow uh, basically grab stuff from you for the long term. So Right. And a lot of those guys, they, they will give you value or the appearance of value on one side of your left pocket and then steal money out of your right pocket and take even more. So that's really kind of the deceptive marketing that a lot of these other companies will do. Where, where Celsius is here trying to bring as much value as we can to our users, where other companies are trying to kind of take as much value as they can from their customers. And, and that's a fundamental difference about Celsius versus um, other companies. So we're going out there, we're deploying assets and we're bringing all of that value back to the community um, where other companies are kind of using their community to extract this value as much as possible. Yeah. All right. Well, again, a lot of uh, AVEX fans uh, at Celsius. So we prepared a video for them. Let's run that. I don't know if we had an AVEX video. We had oh, an AVEX promo? promo. Yeah, just we had a promo. promo. All right. Week. So we showed that already. Sorry. So, uh, so, you know, in the winter, the best thing you want to do, right? What do you want to do in the winter? You want to go to a warm place, a place that is uh, has sun and a beach, right? And you just want to have your walk in on the beach, have your feet get wet with the oceans, uh, kind of, uh, and 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 go visit the Bitcoin 2022 conference. So we have a video on that, right? Let's <laughs> let's see what we. we Yeah. So if you didn't get the hidden message there, okay, don't forget to go to the beach. It's great to be a Bitcoiner and hang out and party late and do all the stuff you do when you go to a Bitcoin conference. Uh, but you also need to relax a little bit, get yourself unwind. So go to the beach, right? There's no better beach than uh, Miami Beach, right? Beautiful sands and, and you can do kite surfing. You can do, you know, you can go and lift weights <laughs> right on the beach. 
and and do all kind of other stuff, right? So and you can see me jogging on the beach. So you can say, hey, I saw Mashinsky jog right on the right on the water. All right. So every week we try to bring you a testimony, a testimonial. And uh, this week Josh uh, helped us uh, get one of our biggest fans, Jim. Uh, so I really appreciate that. Uh, let's roll and see what Jim has to say. To look buff. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Hi, my name is Jim Sissery. I'm an entrepreneur and after spending about 25 years in the world of traditional finance or TradFi. Celsius provides me peace of mind because I know how much they have committed and invested in the safety and security of my assets on their platform. Very easy access to capital, especially important for a small growing business where in as little as 15 minutes, I can have access to capital. And I never thought I'd look forward to Mondays as much as I do now because that's when the reward payment is made and the yield that I earn off of uh, Celsius is second to none. Starting something new isn't easy, especially after you've been somewhere for so long. Setting things up that support and help you uh, is very important, super critical. Celsius, I know, has my back because Celsius gives me things that I need in terms of safety and security for my investment dollar, but also access to capital that I need to help run my business. Celsius makes that part of my life uh, easier. Yeah, thanks, Jim. And um, obviously, Celsius has been paying interest uh, longer than anybody in crypto. Every Monday, like a clock, right? Getting that rewards, getting, getting those extra coins, nothing better than that. And, uh, uh, that's kind of like the foundation of what Celsius is about, but you also should take advantage of the other services when you need a loan. Okay. You can like Jim was talking about, right? All right. So we also had a decrypt, right? We had another, uh, piece of news there. I don't know if you, if we have a, a slide on that or a video. Yeah, I think we already pulled that one up, but we have we did. those. All right. Yeah, those four news articles, and then again your presentation for MIT left for today. Right. How about the, the Equality Lounge? We had that. Uh, I think uh, we didn't bring that one up. Here we go. So yeah. yeah, so this is the second one I was talking about Tushar. Uh, so if you haven't seen that, again, Google that, take a look, and we will. Uh, um, um, you'll enjoy it. Good, good content. So I'm sharing my screen. Let's take a look here. So again, uh, if you don't follow us on um, Twitter, we're at uh, almost 216,000 followers. And you can see here was one of our postings about uh, CB Insight uh, Blockchain 50 Celsius as a winner. Uh, super excited about that. Uh, also, uh, Yield Labs. So if you didn't see the video interview. Help build Web1 and Web2 infrastructure. Sure. Uh, so I am uh, was born in the Ukraine. On oh, I keep saying that everywhere, every show. My God, now I'm bragging about being born in the Ukraine, you know. No, I'm just kidding. All right. So uh, every Ukrainian customer gets $25. We talked about that. Again, thanks, everybody, for sharing it and liking it. Uh, uh, that helps get the message out and makes other people do the same, right? Help uh, the fight, the good fight. Uh, uh, crypto finds its uh, safe haven role in the Russia-Ukraine crisis, right? So again, banks are closed. You can't take money out. Uh, ATMs are uh, tapped out, maxed out. You can only withdraw $20 a day uh, from uh, many of the Ukrainian or Russian banks and you cannot buy any foreign currency. So obviously all that is driving more demand towards crypto and uh, crypto has been holding much better than the stock market, right? You can see that here uh, proving itself as a safe haven compared to other markets. So again, uh, this is from uh, Charles. So if you're not following him, a uh, good source of information. Also, Nasdaq had a, a story about uh, Ukraine war uh, won't deter the Fed, but we do think they're going to uh, do less uh, tightening and less uh, 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 raising of interest rates. So if you want to read about it, I think the this article agrees with my analysis of 
what's happening. Also, war in Ukraine, uh, role of clearing houses. So you, if you want to understand finance better, uh, this is another article that can kind of teach you about uh, all the different pieces. Remember, uh, Russia is the ninth largest economy in the world, right after South Korea. And uh, they, were, they are the third largest oil producer in the world. And uh, that makes them, uh, when you shut down that size of a country, uh, you basically take them out uh, as uh, from the SWIFT system so they can't receive payments. If they can't receive payments, no one will, no one can buy oil from them. No one transacts with them. All of that is basically causing a major slowdown in the world economy and it actually can actually cause recessions. So all these things are going to drive central banks uh, to actually maybe come back into the market and do more to prevent uh, a, a recession, right? So, so we've seen what, what's called the Fed put. That's where the Fed comes and intervenes or puts more liquidity into the market to enable uh, uh, all these countries to continue and operate. And we think uh, intervention may be needed here, which will lift the stock market. That's going to also lift the Bitcoin market. Uh, so expect that in the next few weeks. And uh, I did a very long summary here if you haven't seen it. So this is one of the takes. So we'll just listen to this for a few minutes. Obviously, Putin is now uh, just trying to prepare his legacy, right? He's born the, or he's planning to reunite the, the Russia that he knew when he was a KGB officer, the USSR. I was born when uh, Ukraine was part of the USSR. And uh, he's not, he's willing to sacrifice lives. He's willing to go and change regimes for that. And that's what we're seeing right now happening in the Ukraine. Unfortunately, the West is not willing to commit people on the ground. They're only willing to commit economic, um, you know, sanctions on yeah. Russia. And, uh, but I think what's going to come out of this is that uh, the West is going to unite. And because of these actions, uh, countries that thought that they could run on their own are going to realize that they need the, the West, and especially, especially the United States, much more than they thought before. And because of that, you will see strengthening of the dollar, and you effectively seeing an extension of the empire, the United States empire, and the U.S. dollar as the reserve currency of the world. Uh, these events are empowering the West, empowering the United States, and uh, all of that is obviously good for America. Putin's source of power is high energy prices. And uh, until we deal with that, until we actually create more energy, either by uh, uh, creating a safe uh, nuclear power, by putting more renewables, by allowing drilling and, and other types of, uh, of uh, fossil fuels, uh, we are effectively not going to uh, solve the problem. And, and uh, the Ukraine is just the first country. Uh, I just to remind everybody that uh, you know Hitler also tried to unite all the German people and invaded several. This countries. guy just took exactly parts of what I already did and put it together to into a narrative. The Ukraine. So, if we want to solve the Putin problem, we need to lower energy prices, and to do that, we need to basically uh, allow much more competition, allow much more development of different energy sources that will bring down the price of oil. So we've seen basically that all of this is already priced in. The indexes were down, I think the Dow was down 800 points. And obviously uh, we recovered most of that during the day. And that tells you that the stock market already accepts the overthrow of the regime in the Ukraine as a fait accompli. And uh, because of that, I don't see the rest of this cascading of events in the Ukraine as having any additional impact. So, so again, uh, 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 go ahead, take a look at it. Uh, um, good summary of my thoughts and uh, do a search. We'll post the links for, for this as well. Uh, but uh, you can search for finance now with this title and see this video. And also, um, here we had... Uh, um, uh, we helped raise money for the Ukrainian uh, government. So I think this fund now has uh, $52 million. We were one of the first uh, to post that, validated the address and promoted it, made sure that uh, we could get as much as possible uh, for the government and uh, we'll help them uh, get dollar loans and other things 
against all this crypto. So we're very active trying to help out. And in a few minutes, I will uh, do the, uh, this is the MIT presentation that I did. I just want to just a few more uh, thoughts uh, with me and Zach uh, before we uh, jump into it. So let's switch back. And um, so I, I wanted to talk about, um, you know, why freedom uh, wins in the long term, right? Uh, you see uh, autocrats and uh, bureaucrats all over the world, uh, uh, people like Putin, you, and you would say, hey, a strong man should win against the chaos and the uncertainty and the changes in democratic regimes, right? You're seeing confusion and it looks very messy and there's voting and there is a lobbying and all that stuff. And you're saying to yourself, gosh, you know, when is the West going to get their act together? When are they going to actually do something? But when there is a crisis like the Russian Ukraine crisis, you can see how quickly uh, the West uh, comes together and, and uh, these democratic countries uh, do the right thing. You know, Churchill said very famously in, uh, in the middle of World War II, uh, uh, as the Germans were bombing London and, and his people, the British people were asking him, when are the United, when is America going to come and help us? And I said, America always does the right thing, but only after it exhausted all other possibilities. And we're right now in that process of exhausting all other possibilities. So we're putting sanctions. We're helping the Ukrainian people. We're doing we're getting the West together. We are, uh, you know, thinking if there is peace that could be made. We can. We are waiting for Putin to wake up and maybe uh, get back to his senses and go back to Russia. But it looks like uh, here uh, we're going to have to take uh, more aggressive action. It's just going to take some time, and we have to be patient. But you have to understand that the West wins because uh, of law and order. Uh, and, and law and order and this, even with this chaos, right, uh, still attract the best talent in the world. If you look at the United States of America as the beacon of hope and beacon of, of uh, freedom. And, and you know, I'm one of those people who came to the States uh, uh, because of all these reasons. Uh, uh, and you're seeing, again, the, the talent, the, the intellect, the capabilities of this amazing country of which I'm uh, proud to be a citizen, uh, you understand that freedom and democracy are the long-term winners. And uh, tyranny and, uh, um, you know, seeing people who care about their own legacy instead of the uh, 150 million people that live in their country, like Russia, uh, are the losers. Sooner or later, they lose because they lose all the talent. You're seeing people like Vitalik, like other people, like, Sergey Brin, other people all leave Russia, right? They all, all the best people leave Russia and create these amazing uh, futures uh, somewhere else. They don't create them uh, under tyranny. They create them under freedom. They create them under a, and they create prosperity for themselves and for everybody else around them, right? Well, this is it's exactly what we're trying to do to do here at Celsius, right? Is do it through inclusion, do it through uh, 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 sharing instead of doing it through tyranny and doing it through conquering, right? Conquering is how the human race uh, operated for the last 2,000 years. I mean, it's 2022, right? So it's just painful to see how we, the human race, just can't move forward and leave the past behind, right? Uh, so all of that is definitely not helping us as a human race uh, move forward. Um, so again, a reminder, um, we want you, right? Y-O-U, it's you at Celsius.network. You can use CellPay. Uh, just go to your app. You have an option there to use CellPay. Please, uh, all that money is going to go for humanitarian uh, uh, causes in the Ukraine. And uh, if you have an organization there that you want to recommend for us, send that as well. You can DM me about that as well or send it to CEO at Celsius.network. And all the monies we collect are going to go to help uh, uh, the Ukrainian people. All right. So great. So let's, uh, Zach, any uh, thoughts before I jump into the presentation? 
No, all good. I'm very excited to see uh, what you presented at MIT. I know a lot of us weren't able to go there. Um, you know, I, I was a C student in high school as well, so they would have never let me in. But uh, I'm very excited to see what you uh, showed them. Hey, Zach, uh, it, it's the A student that worked for the B students, or the B students that worked for the C <laughs> students. So you're going to have a few MIT guys work for you. So just right. uh, just be patient, you know? All right. So, uh, all right. So let's jump into it, and uh, I'll leave some questions. I'll leave some time for questions. And definitely, please. Uh, um, and, okay, so here we go. Present. And again, so so this presentation was all about why uh, all roads lead to decentralization and why all roads lead lead to crypto specifically. And again, my specific experience with voice over IP and why money over IP is the new chapter. But it's really the same movie. It's the same ending it's the same everything and uh, uh so if you think about where we are right we are, we, we're in this transition gig gigantic transition again this transition is bigger than the internet right so we have tradfi on the left which is structured like a pyramid where uh you have to scale right if you want to make any real money or if you want to get to financial freedom you better be at the top of the pyramid you better be part of that 0.7 if you're not, uh, uh, even if you're in the mass affluent part, you are not, you're barely surviving, right? Um, because uh, uh, the costs are getting higher. Like, I, again, I have, I have three kids in college and it's just crazy, right? It's a, and, and my other three kids are in, uh, in high school or in uh, middle school. Uh, the cost of those schools are higher than the cost of college. So it's just crazy, right? I don't know how anyone can afford anything, but... Um, there's a whole nother world, a CFI DeFi world, which is uh, riding on top of this decentralization movement uh, in which the rules are totally different, in which value creation and value distribution is not based on your ability to climb a corporate ladder or your ability to elbow your way in front of other people or your ability to uh, 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 do something that other people can do, that only a fraction of 1% can do by being an entrepreneur or inventor or something like that, right? So in the CFI DeFi world, uh, the distribution is much more equal, the opportunity is much more equal, and that's why you're seeing mass migration of young people, experienced people. You look at the people Celsius has managed to add to our management team, right? Like our new CFO, our new COO, uh, right, tremendous amount of experience migrating from the TradFi world to the CFI DeFi world. And, uh, and on that and last one, it didn't make sense to me. Um, my first job was at a grocery store, and I was looking at the manager of the store and how much money they made. And I and and that guy like lived at his job. You know, he worked ten hours a day, six days a week. And I just couldn't imagine trying to fight and climb and and die to give up all your holidays and do all that stuff just to work up that corporate ladder. Right. And it's getting worse and worse because, uh, um, you know, again, people have to work longer. So where people used to retire when they got to 60 or maybe 65, I was at dinner uh, last night and next to me uh, was sitting this woman. She's 78 years old and she's a lawyer still working, right? Uh, four or five Crazy. days a week. So so that's, and, and obviously she enjoys her job, but but uh, that corporate ladder is, is just brutal. So now you're not just competing against the 40 year olds and the 50 year old. Now you're also competing against the 70 and the 80 year olds, you know, so it just doesn't end. Right. So, um, but the new world, this new decentralized world, the Bitcoin, the Ethereum, uh, is very confusing for people. Right. I mean, every day people beg me to explain to them, uh, what is Bitcoin and, and, uh, why is it so, difficult for them to understand it. And, and really, uh, I think this slide kind of captures that, right? So it's everything you don't understand about money. And I can tell you, most people don't understand much about how money is created, who creates it, who can take advantage of it, how money makes money. And you match that with everything you don't understand about computers or computing uh, or cryptography, right? Put all that together. And gosh, there is so much, the, the bar is very high, right? Uh, but the opportunity is not about being a world expert in cryptography or being a world expert in Bitcoin, right? The opportunity is about new business models, right? So if you looked at the pyramid, 
You don't want to bring the best business model from Wall Street to crypto. You want to invent new circular uh, business model in which everybody benefits. The beauty of Celsius and the reason Celsius is one of the most successful companies in crypto is because we invented a new business model. And that's really where you have to go to. So the problem is described here by the economist better than anybody else, right? We have tremendous amount of money printing, even right now. All the central banks in the world are still printing money left and right as fast as they can to basically uh, uh, gap or uh, bridge us through the corona crisis, bridge us through the 2019 uh, 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 you know, flash recession we had because of the repo market. Uh, now you have the, the war in the Ukraine all the uncertainty, uncertainty around the world, that spigot is just not going to close. It doesn't matter what they tell you. They're going to have to continue printing. As they devalue the currency, right? You already paid 50% of your money uh, in taxes. The rest of it is just going to disappear because of all of this money printing. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, again, this slide doesn't even go to 2022, right? This is just covering the beginning of the recession. So go to fred.gov and take a look at M1, M2, the growth of those. And you can understand that, again, 40% of all the money ever existed in the history of the United States of America, 250 years, was printed in the last two years. Uh, so inflation you, is you can 40%. See, it's like every time there's a crisis, the speed at which money is created increases. So it looks fairly stable. And then you see uh, 2001, it starts to uptick. And then 2008, it upticks again. And then 2020, it takes another massive uptake. So like the solution seems to always be, let's create more money. Well, yeah, but also the amount that they're printing has to go up by five or 10 X, meaning the little bit of money that it took to fix the, the 2000 recession uh, is obviously not sufficient, right? So the amount of money you had to print after the 2008 recession was order of magnitude greater than the 2000 recession, the dot-com recession. So again, that creates much more supply. So money is actually accelerating the, the amount of money. That means when you go to sleep, the money you have uh, is has less uh, purchasing power when you wake up, right? And uh, the opposite of that is true for uh, several cryptocurrencies. Not for all of them. Many of them do have inflation. Uh, but for example, Ethereum is now trying to be deflationary and Bitcoin is trying to be deflationary because so many people lose their keys, right? So it's not because uh, but, uh, Ethereum does have a burn function as well, but really, uh, unfortunately, a lot of people lose their keys, lose their coins, and all those coins are gone forever. And that creates a deflationary pressure. Celsius has a very unique model in which we are we don't print, we don't create new uh, Ethereum or new Bitcoin equivalent, right? No new cell is being created. And on top of it, we have a weekly burn. So we definitely, I have to add uh, one more line here representing uh, the cell token. Uh, but even with all of that, uh, if you look at, okay, who is the winner? Who is the best performing asset out there? Bitcoin, this is a logarithmic scale, and you can see how Bitcoin beats Amazon and Apple and every every one of your favorite names uh, by an order of magnitude, right? So we talked about the world of nations and how basically no one is willing to stand up to the central banks uh, until recently, right? So El Salvador and the Ukraine, by the way, uh, are uh, the two very few countries that decided to uh, do something with crypto. And uh, I think you will see many, many others uh, raise their hands. And I think uh, when that takes hold, uh, you will see uh, central banks uh, take notice and actually change their ways, right? So Bitcoin is like a Pac-Man and it's just going to eat all the different asset classes. And a lot of third world countries that see what happened to Russia, they're seeing, oh my gosh, now uh, the rest of the world or the United States weaponize the dollars. They can shut me down, shut down SWIFT. And what do I have? What kind of asset do I have that I can use uh, if uh, the same thing happens to me? So I think you're going to start seeing uh, other countries or, go or governments or uh, sovereign funds start buying Bitcoin for these reasons. It's an accelerator, right? So uh, for all of us, uh, dollar is the comfort zone. It's the area where we feel most comfortable. We think dollars are amazing. 
Uh, but dollars are an exceptional form of payment. They're actually a horrible store of value, as I shown you before, right? So, so really, you have to think about okay, can I move from dollars to stable coins like Tether or U USDC or others or PAX? And can I earn some interest to kind of fight that inflation? Uh, or should I move even further? Should I move to a non-correlated asset class, something like gold, where I can uh, basically detach myself from the dollar, right? Gold has scarcity and is not necessarily correlated to the dollar. Uh, so I'm going to go further uh, down the, the, you know, away from the comfort zone. And if you really understand that the gold is not, like in the last 10 years, gold, uh, uh, I think, is, uh, has not gone up at all. Uh, then you understand that Bitcoin is really a unique, uh, uh, you know, asset class, and you need exposure to that to protect yourself from the debasement of the U.S. dollar. Again, the dollar uh, went off the gold standard in 1971, and since then it lost over 90% of its value. So, and the dollar is the best performing fiat currency out of all, right? So, uh, so obviously losing 90% of its value is not something you want to live with right so that's that's why we have to decide on all these things so i think that's a perspective that many people lose is that these fiat currencies generally don't last very long and so if you picked any other fiat currency besides the dollar you would see an even worse track record so when it comes to fiat money um, the dollar is doing very well in the fiat world but compared to everything else it's absolutely you know a terrible store of value Right. And, and, you know, I, I, I made this slide uh, so people can get a perspective. You know, a lot of people kind of say uh, they think, well, how big can crypto be? You know, like uh, and, and crypto is like a hungry Pac-Man, right? It never stops. It keeps running and eating more and more and more. And you have to understand that it's basically going after all the money in the world. Right. And the reason is that most other asset classes uh, are basically uh, have a structural problem. They're all relying on this dollar that has a debasement problem that has a inflation problem that has debt problem huge right trillions hundreds of trillions of dollars worth of debt and uh, you have to understand that all of that as money moves from tradfi to cfi and defi it just makes crypto bigger and bigger and bigger and here you can see uh, it basically slowly eating all the other asset classes so to zach's point uh, if you look at the history of stable coins sorry of of uh uh, reserve currencies, right? Uh, this is like the order by which we had uh, a different uh, empires, right? I skipped a few here, uh, the Byzantine Empire and the Ottoman Empire and so on, but just to give you a more recent history, uh, but basically uh, all these countries, Portugal, Spain, uh, the uh, Netherlands, you know, uh, France, Britain, and so on, all debased their currency and that's why they lost their dominance as a reserve currency. Again, today the United States is the reserve currency, but your money is really printed on cotton. You see that cotton sign on the left? So really, uh, it's backed by cotton. That's what uh, it is, a little bit of cotton, a few, few pennies worth of cotton. So, uh, and if you want to uh, somehow preserve your wealth, you're going to have to uh, detach yourself from uh, these currencies. So you can see to Zach's point, uh, most of them last anywhere between 80 and 110 years. And you can see the dollar is kind of on its last legs. Again, I, I do admit that Ukraine is probably going to push, uh, extend the life of the U.S. dollar. So I gave it, uh, this was, I did the slide before uh, Ukraine uh, crisis. I said 2025, maybe now it's going to be 2030. But uh, uh, you do want to start building uh, your holdings on other assets. So... Also, you should think about the global blockchain as, as a race, like a, car, a Daytona car race, where uh, the first car out of the already doing several laps uh, is the Chi uh, Chinese digital yuan, right? They already launched that. There are more people using uh, the Chinese digital yuan than CBDCs plus open blockchain or Bitcoin, Ethereum, and so on put together, right? So they're way ahead uh, and they're aggressively uh, pushing uh, for hundreds of millions of Chinese to start using uh, digital yuan. Uh, and again, through that, they can control the actions, incentivize the behavior they want, and disincentivize the behavior they don't want. Right behind the main car, we have the open source uh, public blockchain. That's Bitcoin, Ethereum, and so on. 
and uh, that car is uh, just getting ready to start the race and we have to catch up and pass uh, the Chinese Yuan, right? Because we don't want them to get mass adoption. We don't want them to get uh, billions of people uh, using them and making the Chinese Yuan uh, the reserve currency of the world. And the last one is really, again, CBDCs and corporate blockchains trying to basically still figure out, okay, who's the driver? Which race are we going into? Do we have an engine in the car? Did we put it in? Did anyone test it? Hey, what about the gasoline? Do we have four wheels? That's what we are on CBDCs, right? Our central banks are still scratching their head trying to figure out what to do. So that car is really in the garage. It's not even on the track, unfortunately, right? So, but we, we all need to vote with our pockets and we all need to decide who we're voting for. In this case, again, I obviously vote for the public blockchain, but unless all of us vote for that, China with their CBDC have a pretty good chance of winning out. And, and uh, we need to basically help make sure that that does not happen. So we talked a little bit about the assets we have, right? We feel super rich. Everybody's showing everybody else their portfolio and saying, gosh, look how much Amazon or Apple I own. You have to understand that behind it is tremendous amount of debt, right? And this debt is, doesn't go away just because you had a recession or you had COVID or the economy didn't do well, or there was a war, all that debt keep piling up and it accumulates more and more debt because there's interest that comes due and uh, many, many companies fail uh, because of that, right? So now during the COVID period, our government has bought all this debt. So as debt came due, we rolled it over. We kicked the can down the road because the Fed was willing to buy any kind of debt. Didn't matter if it was triple uh, A or it was triple B minus, uh, right? Or, or, or C graded debt. Uh, somebody was ready to buy it and stand behind it. And because of that, you didn't see much defaults. But obviously, as the Fed walks away, uh, you're going to start seeing companies fail. And that's going to create tremendous amount of stress in the market. Uh, so again, Celsius was the first company to reach 20 billion in AUM in, in, in crypto, in what we do. And uh, that just shows you the fact that, again, at least uh, a million and a half other people kind of agree with this uh, idea that that you have to detach yourself and go and and create a different uh, uh, platform in which you're not really attached to the dollar, right? Your home, your income, your savings, everything you own is denominated in dollars. So if the dollar loses its mo uh, position and it starts getting devalued even faster, inflation runs even faster, everything you own will lose more value faster than you think. Uh, and again, Celsius was created in the United States, in, in New York City, by just a few people, right? Our original team here, I think, had uh, uh, 12 people. And you can see me there next to my uh, co-founder, Daniel, facing away. Um, uh, and uh, again, thanks to all the founding team uh, who was there to make this crazy idea come to be. And for those of you who haven't uh, looked at this, this is... Uh, uh, like a collection of some of the conferences that I spoke all over the world, promoting the whole idea of uh, uh, not just cryptocurrencies, but also the idea that you can earn yield or income uh, on the blockchain. It was uh, definitely a crazy and revolutionary idea. Everybody thought of Bitcoin as just a store of value that you just keep hodling. And uh, Celsius invented something different. Um, and again, it's based on a very simple assumption, right? That all of us should have our money work for us, not just us work for our money. And that's what banks do. Banks have their money work for them, right? They, they, don't, they don't work hard. Bank, you know, the, the best expression is banking hours, right? It's like, uh, hey, I work banking hours, right? I barely work. So, uh, and the, the reason banks can get away with it is because look at the consolidation, right? Since 1990, the number of banks has shrunk dramatically, merger after merger after merger. So now you have four banks with more than half of the deposit in the United States. And you see the gray area. That's how much interest they pay you. Basically nothing. Why? Because there's no competition. So now Celsius comes and says, hey, we'll pay you 10, 20, 50 times more than your bank. Why? Because everything the bank used to pay you is, uh, is not going to shareholders. So looking again at, at creation of uh, GDP or creation of... Uh, 
growth in our economy, you will see that actually our growth has been slowing down. That's a blue chart. And the amount of debt that we accumulated has been growing up. So we are really getting, the only reason we have growth is not because we are creating new amazing things. It's because we are borrowing more and more from the future and we are spending it today to keep us from being uh, actually no, have no growth whatsoever. Right. And you can see the same thing on, on another chart here where since we went off the gold standard, you can see before that our productivity uh, was completely aligned with our income, but now you can see that there is a, a detachment or there is a bifurcation and, and separation between the people who are either in finance or in tech and the people, the rest of the economy. So if you're in the wrong part of the economy and you haven't seen any of the gains uh, since 1970, since the dollar lost, again, 90% of its value. So. What Celsius is here to do is exactly what the OCC was actually preaching. This is a slide from the Office of the Control of the Currency, uh, uh, basically suggesting or promoting unbundling of financial services. And what crypto slash Celsius slash Bitcoin, Ethereum, and so on are doing is exactly that, unbundling financial servicing yield. The yield that we pay you is the unbundling of financial services. It's delivering something to you that that banks and other institutions are just not willing to pay you. They don't have to, right? And, and you, the consumer, by leveraging CFI and DeFi, can basically leverage your assets to earn yield, access all that yield that normally you would not be able to uh, uh, get access to. So we talked a little bit about Celsius X. Uh, Celsius X uh, allows us to bridge uh, many, many of these different liquidity pools, like Polygon is one example of it. Uh, and these are all other like layer two bridges that uh, rely on smart contracts. Celsius is doing it natively in a much, much more safe way and allows you to basically, as a, as a user, a Celsius user, normally you push crypto, we give you yield on the left side. Now you can extend the crypto, not just to Celsius, but also to Celsius X, which allows you to participate in all the DeFi uh, uh, opportunities directly. So CFI plus uh, Celsius, uh, Celsius plus Celsius X are two sides of the same coin, allowing you to basically uh, take much deeper, much more engaged part of what's happening in DeFi. For most people that's uh, DeFi and all these letters here are like Chinese, but uh, please visit the Celsius X dot io website there's a lot more detail here and again this is how everything works if you understand how this slide work come work for us because very few people do uh, apply for a job x at celsius.network and tell us what the slide means and you can join the celsius x team or one of our uh, DeFi teams okay and and again to deliver this we're not doing it on our own we partnered with amazing companies like chainlink polygon uh, uh, we obviously enabling Doge, Coin, uh, uh, Ethereum, um, uh, Cardano, and so on. And we'll be adding more and more coins uh, to this later on. Also supporting other uh, protocols like CCIP, where basically all of our activities with Polygon are supervised, monitored by Chainlink. And, and through that, we are enabling uh, proof of reserves uh, where people can verify it in real time that what Celsius does uh, does not create double spend or leverage or any kind of any of the ills uh, that you are familiar with uh, from the financial world. So again, a different look at uh, where we are, right? We had like three waves of uh, innovation in the crypto space. The first wave was just infrastructure, right? One Bitcoin, one cryptocurrency after another, one blockchain after another. So the granddaddy is obviously Bitcoin. After that, we had several others. So, uh, you know, um, Ripple is another one, Ethereum, uh, Tezos, uh, and so on, right? So many of these kind of older chains, uh, original chains. And then people started building middleware on top of it, right? So different types of middleware. And more recently, you're starting to see dApps or distributed applications that are taking advantage of all of these capabilities. Now, Celsius, again, bridges not just the crypto world where you see these three circles, but also bridges the traditional world, TradFi, 
And these are the circles on the TradFi side. These are all the people we need to bring over. We need to bridge uh, from TradFi into CFI and DeFi. So, and we're in the process of adoption, right? It started with retail, then we had crypto funds, then we had a bunch of market makers come and join, traditional asset manager. Now we just had the process of getting the investment banks, the, the pension funds, the sovereign funds and governments and so on. And again, this is a very happening place. A lot of different names, hundreds and hundreds of companies raising billions of dollars, but they're going to be few winners. You're not going to see all these companies make it right. So you do have to make your uh, picks and understand who has a long-term business model, who is here is just a transitory, not really providing value, just creating a lot of hype and make your choices. So, Again, uh, Bitcoin is 13 years old, and uh, during that period, we had a four giant transition. So think about it as a relay race, a uh, four-man relay race, in which, again, Satoshi creates the whole thing and hands off. He finishes the, the product. He does a few transactions, he or she, and uh, they hand off the baton to the cypherpunks. And there weren't that many cypherpunks, right? So they grab the baton, they start running, and they realize they're not enough of them, and they have to uh, hand off the baton as well. So a few years ago, basically, uh, libertarians took the lead, and every time there's a hand off of this baton, uh, Bitcoin drops by 60, 70, 80%, right? And why? Because when you do a handoff, uh, many of the original people just leave, right? They go back from crypto land to fiat land, which makes the whole thing start all over again, meaning you have to rebuild your customer base, rebuild the belief, rebuild the, the vision, the, the excitement, the, the conviction that people have in all of this happening. So here the libertarians got to about 3 million and they did, couldn't get enough people. What did they do? They went to the speculators and said, hey guys, look, we can't lift this thing, okay? Can you get us to mass adoption? And the speculators were like, sure, we know we can get Bitcoin from a few hundred dollars to $20,000 and we're gonna sell all of that to institutions, right? And obviously, when they tried to do that in 2017, yes, Bitcoin went up to 20,000, but the institutions were just not there, right? They dropped the baton. Again, Bitcoin went down 83%. Ethereum went down 91%. It went down to $83 from, I think, $2,000, something like that. And uh, again, the, the people who were hodling did just fine. The people who were scared or who ran away uh, don't have any Bitcoin today, right? They're all sitting in in, uh, in dollars fighting the inflation that you're seeing on the other side. So, so right now, uh, again, if you think of, of the history of software or the history of, of uh, finance, you'll see, again, three-wave centralized software. Think of Microsoft or IBM, the old school. Then you had web software, web 1.0, web 2.0. And now we have decentralized software, right? So again, no one owns it. It's fully distributed. Uh, uh, if you think of Web3 or you think about the metaverse and everything that's happening there, uh, uh, the existing companies, the Web2 companies, are don't have a clue how to deal with it, right? They, they have a hard time participating. But really, there's a very simple and very powerful formula. If you just stick to this formula, you can win and you can build very powerful applications. In this case, Again, uh, uh, E equals MC square. Okay, if you have a hard time remembering, uh, you should uh, think about what Einstein would have said here. No, E is not does not stand for energy. Ethereum, uh, M is not mass. It's actually members. How many members you have? The more members you have, the bigger your community, the more powerful you are, and you can see that manifest itself with the size of the Ethereum community, the size of the. Um, uh, Bitcoin community and so on. So everybody's fighting for the community rather than fighting for assets. And then on top of it is, okay, what is your utility? Is utility credit? Is your utility uh, store value? Is your utility uh, gaming or whatever? And that's the multiplier that allows you to really create a lot of value in this community. So if you look at the Celsius business model, again, our flywheel kind of drives itself. We talked about at the beginning of the show. I'm not going to uh, repeat it, but there's definitely a tremendous amount of opportunity. It's a repeatable cycle. It just keeps circling and circling and circling, creating more and more and more opportunity for more people, right? 
So, so how do you cross this chasm? How do you go to mass adoption? Right? Obviously, again, Satoshi creates this thing, launches Bitcoin, then Vitalik launches Ethereum. Those are your two first uh, stepping stone. And you can see the adoption, anarchists, libertarians, speculators, institutions, right? But you have to do the handoff. You have to cross. So is the next step security tokens? That's what some of the regulators are pushing us towards. They're saying, hey, stop doing all this decentralized stuff. Make everything a security, uh, or is the next thing going to be some kind of a corporate uh, uh, version, like Libra or something like that? Uh, is it going to be NFTs, right? So there's all these versions, all these things uh, fighting or competing to be the next stepping stone towards mass adoption, right? Towards the green area, which is our mass adoption. And again, these slides are several years old. You can see we, we used to use these animals as our... Um, uh what are they called mass thank you yeah was, uh, <laughs> which one was you way. weren't you one of them i was one of them yes uh, and uh each one of these was one of our employees and we kind of gave them identities and so on but i think again we we voted for stable coins that was our pick and we were right and uh, uh obviously stable code uh took off in the last two years so celsius was very uh, I think uh, opportunistic in kind of again uh, getting into the yield business, then getting into the loan business, then the stablecoin business, the mining business. So our stepping stones were uh, really uh, done well. And again, that helped the community, helped the community earn all this yield. And again, very simple business model, right? Banks take your money, pay you less than 1%. Turn around, lend it to your neighbor, lend it to your mother, lend it to uh, everybody you know at 24% on your credit card, right? Where do they get the money? They take the money from you, your deposits, your paycheck, your uh, excess capital, right? Horrible business model. They keep over 90% of the value. And instead of giving it to their customers, they're taking all this margin and giving it to their shareholders, right? And uh, these are, again, simple things to remember. VoIP to MoIP, we talked about that. And uh, ex again, exchanges are Wall Street types. What do they do? They just socialize losses, right? And, and Celsius Network is socializing profits. We extract yield from people like exchanges, institutions, uh, and then deliver it to you as yield once a week, every Monday, right, as a socialized profit. So... Decentralization is a war between toll collectors and users. Uh, uh, and uh, basically, the next 100 million users, where are they going to come from? Less volatility and more utility. And that's what Celsius is working on, right? Bitcoin is doomsday insurance policy, right? So think about it. Should I have 1% insurance, 2% insurance, 5% insurance for each person? It's something else. Formula is very simple. If you bought some Bitcoin and you're sleeping like a baby, that means you don't have enough Bitcoin. And if you bought Bitcoin and you can't sleep at night, you can wake up in the middle of the night checking prices, that means you have too much Bitcoin. So for each person, it's a different thing. And all of you need to figure it out. Again, stable coins are everyday interest versus crypto, which is here the, uh, to replace the middleman with middleware, right? It's a beautiful quote. And again, if you want to explain to people what this is all about, you have to understand, okay, where are they stuck? And use one of these slides to really get them across the finish line, just to try something out, right? You have to understand, are they worried about, they don't understand uh, what Bitcoin is, or they don't understand where the yield is coming from, or what is it good for, or whatever. Again, Bitcoin is here to replace gold, right? Uh, young people who inherit gold from their parents sell it immediately. Ethereum replaces the bank, right? Ethereum, with its smart contract and other enhanced capabilities, is really replacing all the reasons why you need a bank. Living with banks is like living in a bad marriage, okay? Again, they take from you, charge you fees, and you keep coming back for more and more and more, right? You can only blame yourself, right? So get a divorce, okay? Unbank yourself. Okay, and then again, BTC is deflationary. Why? There's fixed supply, uh, but people lose their coins. So over time, uh, it's deflationary, right? So currently about 4 million BTC have been lost or people don't have their keys. Uh, so the total real supply is something more like 17 or 18 million, right? Again, the Fed is not your friend. Low inflation is good for the already rich, right? Low unemployment, 
guarantees there's no revolution, right? And gives banks more power and IOUs, which uh, uh, they basically use to make more money for themselves. The US dollar is also not your friend. Why? Dollar is a bad store of value, but a great form of payment. Bitcoin is a bad form of payment, but a great store of value. Uh, and again, all this debt that we talked about before is just us borrowing from the future, right? So don't ask what Satoshi can do for you. Ask what you can do for Satoshi. Or don't ask what the bank can do for you. Ask what CIFA or DeFi can do for you, right? I'll fix the slide because it's eating into the slide, this presentation mode. Uh, so most people say, look, Alex, come on. I mean, we can't take down the banks. So they're some of the largest institutions in the world. How is this possible? You know, yes, we can. Stop giving them your deposits. You have to understand that banks, most banks are leveraged 10 to 1 or 20 to 1. All right. So remember uh, to bring friends into crypto. Stop asking what you can do for uh, what Satoshi can do for you and ask what you can do for Satoshi. Again, some of our original team members, just giving them credit. You see uh, Nuke here, our CTO, uh, Daniel, my co-founder, and many other people. Again, the team uh, used to be 50-50, uh, men and women, right? Uh, we try to keep that. Most uh, crypto companies are, again, nine programmers, uh, men programmers, and a dog. And even the dog is a male. They can't even get a female dog. Come on, guys. Let's get some females into crypto, right? Thank you. And we'll go back to try to answer your question. So now that all of you graduated the MIT class, all of you get an MBA from MIT. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, I can't do that. Don't have those powers. But the point is, is that almost everything I talked about here is, is uh, something that is, uh, I think you either recognize or you understand. Nothing is too complicated for you to comprehend. It's just a question of you spending enough time digging into the detail understanding what these things are all about and let's try to answer a few questions so we can uh, um, address what you want to know all right uh <laughs> stuckman right now he's asking um is this an ama uh, does that stand for ask me anything when do the questions get answered they get answered right now thank you for your first question stuckman <laughs> Uh, all right. Uh, don't ask what Satoshi can do for you. Right? Ask what you can do uh, for Satoshi. So that's that's that kind of concept of bringing value to the crypto community, to the Celsius community. Um, that's what it's all about here. Can everyone um, use all caps? Type in your question. Um, we've got still a few minutes left to uh, talk. I know a lot of people posted questions earlier in the chat, but I can't go back to those. So. Uh, please bring it up. Um, Alex, if you could talk a little what? bit about that swap adoption. Um, we released 60,000 more people is the plan to continue this uh, rollout uh, to just about everybody we can. Yeah. And, and again, like I said, uh, almost, uh, I think it's eight or nine countries, uh, another 40,000 being added next week. So uh, uh, definitely check your wallet, open it up. You'll see if the function is available or not. We're trying to include as many as possible, but we're also trying to be careful, try to be prudent and compliant, right? It's good for you, good for us. Um, yep, we're doing it as fast as we can. Yeah, and uh, don't worry, we, we can't give updates on specific areas to specific times. I know that's a big thing on Twitter, so we're opening this up as quickly as we can to around the world, but we don't have specific information on, um, on your particular area around the world. Um, okay, um, so more questions about swaps. Uh, why is nobody pressing the like button? Please press the like button, press the share. Uh, please get this out to as many people as we can. It makes a huge difference. Actually, that's something we should mention at the beginning and, and always throughout the show is please hit the like button. Yes. Okay, um, we're still token. Okay, just looking for some good questions here. Um, people, people are looking for their certi MIT certificate. You know, they, they want to get a, yeah, a raise. <laughs> They it's want to go to the their mail. boss and say, hey, I just graduated Alex Mashinsky MIT class, okay? I'm an expert in crypto, okay? I have an MBA okay. from MIT. All right, Jason's asking, Alex, I see your, your book is a uh, pre-order on um, Barnes & Noble. Where can I get some more information on that? I know, my, my publisher uh, got sick and tired of waiting for me to finish the book. 
So they published the uh, kind of like a teaser to put more pressure on me to finish the book. So I'm going to put the time necessary to finish it. So yes, I, I, I got the message. Thank you, Wiley. I got the message. I'll finish it. <laughs> All right. Um, Mike here is asking, um, is there any more information on the third Amigo, which is the, uh, the Fiat on-ramp? Um, it would be much easier for him to bring new users to the platform uh, when this is live. Yeah, so we are releasing it in two stages. Again, like I said, the tech is done, just waiting for a few t final compliance slash uh, uh, the diligence issues. So any day now, right? So um, uh, I think there are some stuff that's already being added on the March 8th uh, release. So that's a few days from now, next week. And uh, uh, it's not everything. It's just a chunk of new stuff that you'll be able to do. And then the rest of it will come uh, right after. But I don't have a, an exact date. The minute we have it, we'll publish it. And again, you guys, all of you are going to have uh, much easier access, just like we did swaps, right? And now we're rolling it out. This is kind of the same thing. The third amigo, we got him out of jail. He's doing just fine. No worries, you know? <laughs> All in good time. I know we had so many releases uh, this year so far. Everyone's expecting everything to come out this week, but uh, the team is yes. working incredibly hard. Um, we're making fantastic progress. Uh, KH here is asking, um, when can we choose to get our rewards um, in BTC or sell actually for all rewards? Yes, yeah, so if you're uh, accredited in the US, you can actually toggle, you can choose that in your profile. And uh, if you're outside the US, you have that function available basically to, to everybody, almost everybody. So just uh, look at your, go to your profile, look at earn and sell. And now we have pop-ups that help you with that. So, uh, and if you have any, any problems, again, reach out to app at Celsius.network and we'll help you sort through it. Yeah, and then right after the show, we're doing a Twitter spaces. Um, you can come on and ask, ask additional questions. Um, we have open conversation about that. Um, we, again, we are making some additional beneficial changes to the earn and sell uh, program. So next week, um, you'll see those take place and it'll be even easier to earn and sell um, for everybody. Or again, a U.S. accredited in the U.S. Um, and then everyone internationally. Uh, a lot of people really appreciate the, um, the presentation. Um, a lot of people said they learned a lot and appreciate it. Um, Aslan is asking here... Um, uh, about rates, if uh, if we do go back into a bull cycle and we see rates go up, do you think that's going to have a positive impact on uh, Celsius's rates? Yeah, so I think in the bull market, people are willing to take more risk. Right now, the problem is risk. People are very nervous about the war. They think that's going to cause a contagion in other places. People talk about China invading uh, Taiwan and, and uh, Russia invading other countries right and and all that stuff so so i think because of that it's risk off and when there's risk off uh, again there's less borrowing when everything comes down it's going to go back to risk on again it affects less the the cryptocurrencies that are staked those rates kind of stay more stable uh we have 53 i think different assets to choose from so uh uh you know uh you have to figure out what your portfolio mix is and try to take advantage of all these amazing yields. Some of these yields are, like you saw, we also have promos on them, like on AVAX and others. So just take advantage of all of that. All of that is here to help you. Uh, you just need to pick. We don't provide investment advice. We don't recommend portfolio construction. We don't tell you what to buy and what to sell or when to balance or rebalance. We don't do any of that, right? That's on you. You got to do the research. Uh, do your own research, DYR right and our job is to give you the menu right we don't make the sandwich you got to put the sandwich together you like more mustard you got to do it you know you like uh, more uh, uh, tomatoes you make the sandwich the way you like it and you gotta eat it we don't eat it for you either okay we just source the components and it's always fresh and it's ready to go that's our job your job is to put the sandwich together and eat it next question all right. Um, people are asking if we could get access to that PowerPoint presentation. Would that be something you'd be able to share? Sure. Yeah. Happy to share that. Um, we'll find a way to post it and uh, we'll make it available. Yes. Okay. I'll post and it. Then, uh, I, 
I don't know if we can attach it to Twitter, but we'll try to put it on Twitter or something. A link. Okay. To the file. Yeah, we'll find we'll find a way. Um, I, I noticed myself actually that ETH gas fees have gone down significantly. Um, I did an ETH transaction for eight dollars, which seems like a screaming deal for the past yeah. year. Um, so do you think that is part of that risk off? People are just kind of stepping back a little bit due to all the uncertainty in the world and and those fees are just really inexpensive compared to what they were just a few months ago. Yeah, so ETH uh, uh, gas fees are a great indication of the level of congestion in the network, right? So when there's no congestion, meaning you're not competing with all the DeFi guys, you're not competing with all of the NFT guys or the gaming guys uh, to push your transaction through the blockchain, the rates are low, right? So $8 is still higher than Polygon, which is a fraction of a penny, but it's definitely better than paying 50 or 100 or 300 dollars uh for these things which was just a few months ago when things were flying high all right um i think that's all we have time for today um alex if you could uh, lead us out with your closing thoughts and again thank you for the great show and and the mit presentation yeah so again we we are um you know, um, I do these all the time. I usually do them in, uh, you know, for the investment community. I do it in conferences. I do these presentations in universities. And sometimes I even teach, uh, uh, you know, fourth grade students, you know. So uh, I wanted to share it with you, give you access to the same uh, content and do a special episode of, uh, of, of the Celsius AMA that will give you access to what I'm thinking. Again, also... You have some of the videos that we posted where you have a more kind of uh, uh, detailed uh, thought process walking you through what I'm thinking, why am I thinking that way. It doesn't mean I'm right, right? It doesn't mean that I have the answers and I'm somehow uh, seeing the futures. These are just uh, uh, my thoughts and it's a, a evolving process of learning, right? Learning and what, seeing what's happening out there and coming to a conclusion of uh, where things are going. Again, I'm... I'm as optimistic as I've ever been about uh, uh, good winning against bad. And uh, it's in no way I want you to think that this video, or that video, or this presentation, when I talk about debt or whatever, it means the end of the world is coming. All I'm saying to you is that you have to be prepared, right? But at the same time, the level of opportunity, the amount of good that we, we can do with all this stuff, all this innovation has never been greater, right? So... Uh, but you do need to uh, do allocation. You need to decide how much you want to be dollar denominated, how much you want to be uh, crypto denominated, and then diversify, right? And uh, try to give yourself an opportunity to get through this into financial freedom, right? Thanks for joining us. Thank you for everybody for putting this together. Again, try to help some of uh, the Ukrainian people. You at Celsius.network, you can use it for uh, with your sell pay function if not if you want to send us uh, bitcoin or ethereum we published a few addresses on our uh twitter uh channel or on my channel at mashinsky on on twitter and we really appreciate every dollar goes to humanitarian causes related to the ukraine and we will see you uh next week we'll see you on tuesday on twitter spaces have a great weekend take care